Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about endocrinology because I I really needed a break from puberty blockers. Don't get me wrong, I love talking about puberty blockers, um, but I do wanna talk more about uh, endocrinology and especially the adrenal gland today uh, because it's this tiny little gland that sits above your kidney that does a whole lot of stuff. And in fact, I still have a few more differences in sexual development that actually stem from the adrenal gland. Uh, and so it's something that's not really talked about a lot when talking about sexual development, but the adrenal gland plays a huge role in uh, sexual development and um, a lot of development of intersex children. And so we're going to talk about that today. This is just going to be kind of an intro to uh, the adrenal gland, and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty uh, biochemical details at a later date. Uh, but I think all of this is super, super fun. So I have drawn out a kidney and then on top of the kidney, you have a gland, uh, you have two of these, one on top of each kidney, and they kind of look like fat tissue. And a lot of times when we're dissecting these out, um, it can be very easy to throw them away because they just look like a little glob of fat sitting on top of the kidney. And this is the adrenal gland. And uh, I've drawn some layers here because the adrenal gland is a lot like an onion. Onions have layers, adrenal glands have layers, and we're gonna talk about each different layer of the adrenal gland because they each have a very unique function and they all interplay. So when one layer of the adrenal gland uh, isn't functioning properly, the rest of the system has consequences from that. And so some of this may not seem super related to sexual development, but I promise you it is 100% interconnected and they all are very, very, very important. Uh, so these outer layers of the adrenal gland, so these three here, this is called the adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex. Cortex is just the outside, and we'll get to this in a second because I am going to touch on um, this middle part here just briefly. Uh, this middle part, just down here, uh, this is the adrenal medulla. And medulla is just the inside. And the adrenal medulla is responsible for producing uh, two hormones. Uh, epinephrine, which many of you have probably heard of, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Which are your fight or flight hormones. And this is kind of not related to what we're talking about today, but I did want to point out that the middle of the uh, adrenal gland is responsible for epinephrine and norepinephrine, uh, responsible in uh, fight or flight responses and uh, kind of how you deal with stress and dangerous situations. Um, but we're gonna focus on the adrenal cortex, the outer three layers of the adrenal gland. And um, we're going to look at each layer. So I'm going to draw out three arrows so I can kind of go into depth. So the top layer, uh, the one closest to the outside is called the zona glomerulosa. And the zona glomerulosa is responsible for producing a hormone called aldosterone. And aldosterone is a very important hormone in blood pressure regulation and in water balance in your body. Uh, it deals a lot with sodium and uh, how you retain water. So aldosterone is our salt hormone. Uh, then we have in the middle is the zona fasciculata. And the zona fasciculata is responsible for producing cortisol, which is very important in blood sugar regulation. And uh, this is what a lot of people refer to as the stress hormone, um, but it is not like epinephrine and norepinephrine uh, where these uh, are very rapid 
uh, hormones, uh, and granted hormones in themselves usually operate very slowly. Uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine are kind of um, acutely released. They're going to uh, cause rapid uh, increases in blood pressure, pulse, etc. Cortisol is more of a long-term stress hormone. So this is related to uh, glucose in the bloodstream. It causes more glucose to be readily available. Um, and it also is uh, related to a lot of immune responses. So kind of a longer term stress hormone uh, is cortisol. And then the last layer is the zona reticularis. And uh, there are several hormones produced by the zona reticularis. And there's a huge process for how each of these is synthesized. Uh, but this is kind of the layer we're going to focus a lot on uh, because we make a few hormones here, such as DHEA, which is a precursor for androstene dione, which is a precursor for testosterone. And uh, all three of these are produced in the adrenal uh, gland, in specifically the zona reticularis. And uh, then these would also be converted peripherally to estrogens. Um, but you can see if you have an increase of activity in the zona reticularis, uh, you're going to have increased androgens. And so uh, let me just go through. We have... Uh, a kind of memory tool to remember all of these layers in order of the uh, adrenal glands. So aldosterone, we say salt because this is involved in salt balance. Cortisol, cortisol uh, is responsible for sugar balance. And then uh, these three, we say sex because these are androgens. So we have salt sugar and sex and that is how you remember each of these layers of the adrenal gland so uh that is kind of our intro into uh adrenal endocrinology we're going to take these each of these layers and break them down into their individual parts and see where we get differences in sexual development due to hormones uh, and i hope this was helpful for all of you i enjoy this content a lot um, please leave your comments below, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all in the next one.